on, everybody. Stand to your feet, clap your hands, act like you're happy to be here. You're in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night. Not here by accident. Didn't stumble upon this place. I came here on purpose. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor say, on purpose. When I hear the word purpose, it sounds like the word purpose. And what is a purpose? A purpose is an animal that lives in one economy, the water, but derives its life from another economy above. And so whenever you have purpose, you're like the purpose. You can live submerged in this economy, but you derive your life from another. Somebody say purpose. The word purpose comes from the word propose. And a proposal is an invitation to marriage. And he made you on purpose for the purpose of a proposal. Are you guys paying attention or are you already lost? Over there? One day, one day, this, this bride's going to be united with the groom in what's called the rapture of the church. And we're going to enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus is coming. And I want to be ready for that. How about you? Somewhat? Yeah? Yeah? We had a phenomenal Sunday. Uh, I need your help. We did not get a number or all of the people that received the Holy Ghost somehow you fell through the cracks and I know there's some of you here tonight but if we did not get your name please come to me our sister Courtney we where's sister Courtney where are you sister Courtney lady this is the lady in red at all times she's got the most red hair in the church so brother Charlie dubbed her red but uh, sister Courtney and her husband brother Jeremy help us with these statistics and we just would like to have your information so that I can print you a nice certificate and you have a memorial for that event but I know we had several that received the Holy Ghost this past Wednesday and by the way Jesus Worship Center if you're praying with someone and they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost please help us to get that information we're gonna have the born again reports the bars up here so you can just and all we need is their name so I can print that that certificate for them whenever they return the following service is that all right awesome real quick announcements there's a, a family photo fundraiser you can sign up for in the foyer. The photographs are being taken this Saturday, and uh, the proceeds are going to our children's ministry. These photographs are also going to be used for the church database, so you can do that real quick. Vacation Bible School is coming up in July 12th through the 16th. These announcements were on the uh, handout, the, the announcement handout that was uh, given out this past Sunday. Real quick, Madison Ward, where are you, dear? Is Maddie Ward in the house? Maddie Ward, she completed Christianity 3D just a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. But you weren't here for me to hand it out the other day, but you're here now. We got a photo. Where's the photographer? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> she looks homeless, she said. <laughs> okay, that'll learn you. You don't look homeless. You look great. And something else. On May the 12th, Miley Cart received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And she's here tonight. Come on up here, Miss Miley. She's now dubbed Smiley Cart. <laughs> okay, over here, over here. You ready? Look right here. Come see. Hold this. Fantastic. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hmm. If you're our guest tonight, thank you for coming. Uh, this is a continuation of revival. The last two services, Wednesday and Sunday, were just fantastic. God just moved awesomely. People were filled with the Holy Ghost in all of those services and were baptized. Our baptistry is heated tonight, and we always have it ready because Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Water baptism does not make you a member of a church. It has nothing to do with membership. Water baptism is how and when the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to you. When we baptize, we baptize like the apostles did in the name of Jesus Christ. He is the one that shed his blood for you, and you should be buried in his name. Just like when a bride gets married, she takes on the name of her groom. If you would like to be in the bride, you must take on the name of the groom, and the groom's name is Jesus. So, Father, we love you with all our heart. None of us came today to show how good we are or how righteous we are. Or We're not going to worship tonight because we haven't cussed or because we haven't smoked or drank or whatever. We're here, all of us, in need of mercy. Forgive me. Wash me of every iniquity. Cleanse my mind, my heart, my thoughts, my motives, my past, my present, my future. I surrender it all to you, Master. We plead your blood over Calcasieu Parish and Lake Charles. Father, just our, our neighbors to the west have undergone tremendous beating from the weather. I pray for the pastors, for the saints that are in Lake Charles and the surrounding areas, that you would give them just a special dispensation of your grace and strength and peace. 
while they're in the midst of great financial stress. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. And Master, it would not matter had it happened here, had it wiped out this city. We would still continue to bless your name because you are good. It is your nature. It's who you are. And we love you with all our heart in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Clap your hands to the Lord. You ready to magnify him in song? You're welcome to come in the front and worship with us if you like, or you can worship right where you're standing in Jesus' name. I believe there is no doubt because I have seen your faithfulness my fortress over and over I have a hope I have a strength
Ministry team, would you come real quickly? Quickly, ministry team, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God is here right now. I'm telling you, it is just a, a, just held over from Sunday. The power and the presence of God is here. You can have anything. Anything is possible. You don't need a large crowd, and you don't need a preacher laying hands on you, and there's nothing wrong with that. But this, all that's needed is the power and the presence of God, and He is here right now. You don't have to be in a suit. You can be all scruffy and no mechs. <laughs> You could even be dressed like Maddie Ward tonight. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> All that matters, I'll give you a hint, is the 4-H club. And our church knows that. It's the hurting, the hungry, the humble, and the honest. Man, if you ever find your way into that club, if you can ever find your way to a place where you're constantly hurting and hungry, humble and honest. I'm, I'm hurting because of my sin. I'm hungry for more of God. I'm humbling myself by being honest about my, my own flesh. Oh, you're just a preacher. You don't have, yes, I do. I've got my own sins. I've sinned today. I have had to repent. I repent every single day. There's no good people in this church. It's just God people here. It's people who are hungry after God. That's why we call it the no judgment zone. Amen. This isn't a place for the holy to huddle. It's a place for the hurting to gather. So if you're hurting right now, if you're going through a difficult time, addicted, it doesn't matter what it is, come. Let us pray with you. Let us pray for you. If you've never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, evidence by speaking with other tongues, that is your promise from God. And you can have that tonight. Let's continue to come right now. And it doesn't matter who you are, guest, member, come right now. Let us pray with you in Jesus' name.
Jesus, you change everything. Life's healed. Hope is found here now. Jesus, you change everything.
Would you clap your hands to the Lord? I want to bring Brother O'Rourke up here just as soon as I can. Jessica, we're so happy to have you. Would you just, yeah. I don't want to embarrass you, but I probably just did. I'm sorry. But Miss Paula and I, when I saw her, I'm like, I know this face. I know this face. Paula and I, in 1988, were married. And shortly after we were married, I took upon myself to defeat a number. The number was 269. That was the record attendance of our church. I hated the number 269. I hated products that cost $2.69. I wouldn't write a check on check number 269. I hated 269. So we began bus ministry to beat that number. And back whenever Jessica was about five or six years old, we brought her to Sunday school. This is 1988. That was at least 10 years ago. I am so thrilled to see you, to have you here tonight. Thank you for coming. Yep. Joshua, thank you for being here tonight. Frederick and Angel, thank you for being here tonight. God filled Frederick with the Holy Ghost last Sunday. I'm going to have a certificate for you this coming Sunday. That's the hook to make you come back. <laughs> Amen. Give me a second here because there's some other folks I want to thank. I, I know Clint's family's here, your daughter and friends. So happy to have you here. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here, for worshiping with us. And I met, I've already forgotten your name. Forgive me, but I'm so happy that you're here. Avery, that's right. Avery, thank you for coming today. And then uh, there were some others here also. Cody and Autumn Boudreaux. So happy to have you in the house. You are loved here. Anybody love Autumn Boudreaux and Cody Boudreaux? That's what you remember. That's what you, that's what you mark in your brain. That's what you mark in your brain. Every time God does something for me special, I'm like, okay, because remember this moment. Remember this moment whenever you're feeling stupid and Satan's convincing you that, you know, you're never going to make it. And you're, da, da, da. No, 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 no. He touched me. Yeah, he's real. You, you put memorials. You build them and you keep them there so that whenever things go stupid, you don't trust your feelings because they will lie to you. The biggest enemies of your faith are feelings and facts. You live by faith, not by feelings or facts. I'm so grateful to have Brother O'Rourke here. Thank you for sowing. Thank you for giving. Thank you for supporting the revival. And uh, your, your, your funds are needed. Brother O'Rourke drove all the way from St. Louis, Missouri to Jennings just to preach revival for us. And he was going to go all the way back home. And I'm like, Brother, this is too good to stop. And so we spoke Sunday afternoon and agreed to extend this another week. And so he's here tonight, and he's going to be here this coming Sunday. We're expecting at least another half a dozen to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that's possible? So I'm asking you in Jesus' name, if you'd commit to invite, I asked for half a dozen to receive the Holy Ghost. Could you invite six people? Just six people. I don't care if you go to Walmart and find six random people. Hey, would you come to church with me? Find five of them in a row. There's five people. Hey, all of you invited to come to Jesus Worship Center this Sunday. Give them the thumbs up. <laughs> Give them each a dollar bill. They will never forget it in Jesus' name. You'll invite six people. Would you raise your hand in Jesus' name? Come on, six people. Keep it up. Keep it up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless every hand that is raised. May there be abundance in their life. May you give them courage and wisdom, protect them from sickness and disease, and lead them to the half dozen that you've already earmarked, God, for them to touch. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So, Father, we return to you the tithe. We return to you the radical minimum, the first 10%. It identifies you as our provider, and that's exactly who you are. You are the one that has blessed us. Without you, Master, we can't even breathe. I thank you, God, for the sacrifices of gifts that people give out of love, above and beyond the tithe, supporting our missionaries, supporting the revival, supporting phase two, our next building. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless each gift and giver in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. You can return your tithe and offering into the storehouse of the Lord. The offertory is here in the front. You may also give the text on the text to give is on the screen. And you can also give it the kiosk in the front. You're also welcome to pick up some more of these I teach bands. They're here in the front.
Would you join me in standing one more time? I know you just sat down. I appreciate that. But uh, I feel like it, it's appropriate that we reverence the Word of God and, and also the ministry of the Word of God. Brother O'Rourke is here tonight, and uh, I just believe that he's a God-called evangelist to many churches, but in particular to Jesus Worship Center. And uh, I know God's given him a word for us tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are open to your word, to your power and presence. You rolled up your sleeves this last Sunday, made bare your holy arm. You showed off in the house. You gave great confirmation. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the souls that were born again. Thank you for the hunger in the hearts and the desperation that was preached about and illustrated. Tonight, we receive the man of God. We, we ask an anointing upon him, God, to speak to this local assembly and to all those who could be watching online. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the power of God be present to heal, to deliver, to set free, to save. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Would you make welcome the man of God as he comes in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord and feel the anointing of God. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, since I left you all on Sunday, I don't think you care. I'm not going to bore you with my life. I got this wild hair to go to Houston for a couple days. And oh boy, oh boy, was that a big mistake. For those that want to know, and I'm going to tell you in 30 seconds, I left to go. And I'm like, okay, rain. You know, I'm from St. Louis. We get rain. We'll get some snow. Got to Lake Charles. Things started flooding. I was at the point of no return kept going, highways flooding, I was driving through water, I got there to make a long story short, shaking because I thought, Lord, I guess I'm going to make, I mean, I was, I just said my prayers to Lord, if it's my time, I mean, it was that bad on the highways, they kept stopping, get to Houston, watch the weather, you ain't going back, I mean, the weather's saying no way, I told, talked to Belagier on the phone, I was, he called me Tuesday afternoon, we talked on the phone, he said, get in your car and go now. And uh, I drove back, totally different. The sun was out the whole time. Houston was expecting five to eight inches of snow, uh, or snow, rain uh, tonight, I think it is, five, supposedly, who knows. Uh, but it was terrible going there. They keep changing what's going to happen. I don't want to bore you with all this. But the bottom line is, when I woke up today, I was expecting an all-day drencher, according to weather, and God smiled down on us and gave us a break. So we need to be thankful for that. Because according to the weather, and nobody dwelled on this, but I'm sitting here thanking God, because according to the weather, we saw what our dear friends, and some of you may be over there in Lake Charles, who we love dearly, and all these great churches and great people of God have suffered, but the rain was just supposed to continue without a break all the way, and you know how. Yesterday, the sun stayed out way longer than it was supposed to. Today, it's supposed to be nothing but a downpour. We've had very little rain. We got one or two more, 48 more hours of this, and hey, we may scave through this with a lot less damage than what the weather other people predict it. So, hey, we can actually handle a little rain tomorrow. No, no, I'm not saying do it. I'm just saying, well, please, look, we can. Whoo, I didn't know how. I'm sorry. Let me get off on that. What an honor and a privilege it is to be with y'all. I mean, I, I couldn't have gone home anyhow. I've been flooded in, but if there's not, if there's one place I don't mind being flooded in, it would be Jennings, Louisiana. Some of the finest people in the world are right here in Jennings. Brother and Sister Lejeune are some of the finest, finest people. As you know, Brother and Sister Lejeune, Sister Lejeune becoming quite a, she was a book writer, quite a speaker. We already knew her husband was a great speaker and, and all that stuff. But hey, Sister Lejeune's outdoing him now. And I'm just having a little fun. She's, you know, spoke like yesterday and she's just anointed. What an anointed church. I just love walking in here. Y'all are spoiled. I don't know if you know this, but y'all are spoiled. Get in the car and drive with me on a few Wednesday nights in some churches and see what you get to see. Wednesday nights is like, and you walk in here, and I felt like the Arizona, I'm a big Arizona Cardinal fan, don't want to fit anybody. I thought they were getting ready to run on the field. This place is rocking like a football game. But we're praising you. I don't understand why people don't want to come to church here. Because, you know, it may all be depressing outside. You walk in here and you feel energy within, I don't get it. What else is there to do? I don't get it. Ch King James Version, chapter 5, verses 1. <sighs> I want to say this, Pastor. I'm docking my time. There's a district official in St. Louis that lost his son at 35 years old because he could not overcome something in his personal life, which I'm not going to give details on that, but you can read between the lines. Struggle that he fought with for years, and it eventually got the best of him on Sunday night. 
had a son that went to my family's teachers at the Christian school and had him in fourth grade. And oh my, he lost his father. Verse five, chapter five, verses one through three. Don't ever take this life for granted. Don't think you're going to get better tomorrow. Take, do it today. Your personal struggles, deal with it today. Because he was warned many times, and he would always, I'll do it when I, you know. My daddy's a big-time official. He's praying for me. I'll get there when I'm ready. But life's not that way. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep's market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongues Bethesda having five porches <laughs> if not one not two but three I feel like Sesame Street and in these days a great multitude of impotent folk of blind halted halt you know what that means if you don't you know hey can't move halt I'm sure you figured it out withered and waiting for the moving of the water and that's all I'm going to preach. But the thing that I brought out that caught my attention and, and uh, that caught my attention so much in this portion of Scripture was the very fact that Bethesda having five porches had five places for people to hang out. And I want to preach for just a few moments, life beyond the porch. Life beyond the porch. I drove to church and I saw people sitting on their porches and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But we all have porches in our life that hinder us from what God wants. Who needs God to answer a prayer in your life? Hold up one hand across this place. Let's lift our hands. Lord, I'm not worthy to preach to these wonderful people in Jennings, Louisiana. Lord, they've taken the time out of their schedules and all the things going on around them. Uh, many of them have gone through battles through this water situation and whatever's going on in their personal lives. Lord, I thank you for them being here. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And you may be seated. Oh, <laughs> y'all, I just wish we could just sing a little more and just jump around. I just enjoy the show. I love it. People just worship in the Lord. It's fun. Yes. Wednesday night. Most of our Bible stories are extracted from an area in the Bible called, a city called Jerusalem. Some of the ruins of the Pool of Bethesda centered in the city of Jerusalem, which is part of the topography of the nation of Israel. Originally, the Pool of Bethesda had five porches. The Pool of Bethesda existed amongst health, wealth, and prosperity. It was all around them, but yet it never touched them. The Pool of Bethesda was designed for the halt, the lame, and the blind, and they congregated there on the porches surviving there in the middle of a paradoxical situation. One side, people are busy moving. They're near the sheep market. Industry is going on. Activity is going on. Business is going on. Children are playing. But these folks are just stuck. Five porches for five different categories, and they don't share the same reason why they're there. One man is blind, that is why he is there. Another man is halt. He can see, but he sure can't move. Another man walks fine, but he's withered away from sickness and he cannot work. The only thing that these people have in common is that they each have some malady, some trauma, or physical infirmity that has brought them to this place. Now, the Pool of Bethesda is also indicative of the times which the text was taken. There was no medical hospitals to take these people that they might be made whole. This was a holding place for people who weren't dead, but they were not alive. Stuck in between, not able to enter into the life going on around them, but not dead enough to go to the cemetery behind them everything they did they enjoyed the fact that they just survived and 
And I could preach a sermon on that alone, doing outreach and talking to people on the outside of church, on the inside, that are just barely here. And they're good. I'm good. I'm good. But if you find out their life, they're not so good. They're just surviving. And they're content surviving. And an environment that lends itself to people who have been through catastrophic situations, it is not uncommon to lose somebody every day. Hmm. Whatever you got, well or not, to some degree, the fact that you're alive is a celebration in itself. Some people are just happy to be alive. But the text suggests that a pathology developed around the pool, a pathology that is given to people who have survived. It is possible to develop a mentality that fits your environment that simply makes the best of a bad situation. I'm not happy. I'm not going to get the most out of life. So I'm just going to bring my expectations down to my reality. I'm going to enjoy the fact that they didn't carry me off to the morgue today because I'm just barely here. I still got a roof over my head. Never mind that it leaks. Rain. Never mind that it may have caved in, rain. Never mind that it hasn't been painted in 20 years. Some of the, some of the, uh, the torture in the pool of Bethesda exist in the commerce in which it's surrounded. What does that mean? It means while they're surviving, because I'm down and everybody's down around me, then down becomes normal. I'm just going to live like this because everybody else lives like this. Preacher, you could preach healings, miracles, and revival all you want, but I'm just barely surviving. And my mama's barely surviving. My friends are barely surviving. My cousin's barely surviving. My neighbor's barely surviving. So I can come and sing about Jesus till my face turns blue. But preacher, I'm barely surviving. What makes down terrible is when you are down but you can still see up. I'm here, preacher, man of God, but I'm down and I see people around me that are up. I see people around me getting healings and miracles. I see people around me getting blessed. I see people around me worshiping God. I see the outpouring of the Spirit all around me, but when people see something beyond them, generally it will make them go after it, you would think. A lot of times people don't want anything because they've never been exposed to anything. A lot of times people are never exposed to the anointing and the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. So they just accept that that's all they're going to be is their surroundings. Honey, when I walked into a church, I wasn't exposed to much in my life except depression, child abuse, drugs, and alcohol. So guess what I became? I sat on a porch full of depression, full of drugs, and full of alcohol. Guess what? I surrounded myself with people depressed that liked alcohol, that liked drugs. People I dated were on drugs and alcohol and sat on a porch of anger and bitterness. But when I walked into a church... I got exposed to a God that is greater than that nasty, dirty porch that I'd been... So I made up my mind, I'm not going to sit on this porch anymore and be exposed to everything that I've always been exposed to. But I want to go up in the presence and the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. Because we read that the pool of Bethesda existed behind, beside, excuse me, a sheep garden. A sheep garden, a sheep market, I'm sorry. A garden growing sheep, that's funny. If you can grow some sheep in your garden, let me know it. On one hand, sheep are being brought down to the market to be sold and life and productivity is going on. But on the other side, by Bethesda, I'm not trying to be gruesome, but it's reality. They're picking their sores, wrapping their wounds because they are stuck in a state of survival. Is this okay, church? Just because you're anointed doesn't mean you escape the subculture you develop around your dysfunction. 
You can feel the anointing of God and still have dysfunction all around you because as soon as you walk out of here, you get back on the porch with the same people that you've always been on the porch with because you're comfortable in your flesh sitting on that porch with those people. But as for me and my house, it's time to get off that old, nasty, dirty, disgusting, depressing porch and walk into the house of the Lord. I see the sheep market. I see the anointing. So I'm going to get off this porch and I'm going into the presence of God. I'm sick of my subculture. I'm sick of my friends and everything around me. I need to step above. Pastor, I'm trying not to get too excited. It'll hold you as a prisoner. You know, I'm a bird lover at times. Then they annoy me at other times. As pretty as a canary is, and as pretty as it sings, they're still in a cage. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost. You can sing kumbaya, Lord. You can jump up here and shout and dance, or you can clap your hands, or be a faithful member of Jesus Worship Center and still be in a cage. You can say something with your mouth and do something, but not live it with your life. You can talk God all day long, but as soon as you walk out of here, you're miserable because things around you are overtaking you. I just want apostolic. We've been hearing more bad news. Think right here in southwest Louisiana. We've had hurricane after hurricane. We've had flooding. We've had depression. We've got addictions. We've got broken homes. What else is it going to take to wake us up and make us realize that porch is miserable? I don't want to hear about another flood, another hurricane, another overdose, another person's life being messed up. But I want to walk in the house of God and say you can flood this land, but you can't stop the anointing of God. You can attack this world, but greater is he that is in me than he. Oh, you may be underwater in the physical, but I'm above water in the spiritual. I may be bound by addictions in the physical, but I'm getting ready to come out in the spiritual. Pastor, I'm there. I'm going to get all wound up again. The blind had a porch. The lame had a porch. The halt had a porch. If you want to know what a porch is, you're look. You mean, let me just ask you this. I, I, I do this to myself. If you want to know what porch you're on, look in your cell phone. Your cell phone tells exactly who you are. Talk to that porch that you're on. The people you surround yourself. You cannot surround yourself with blindness and expect to see. I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to be offensive. You can't run with angry people and expect to be happy. You can't hang out with defeated people and expect to be an overcomer. I'm tired of walking in the church houses and people going, whoa, well, I'm barely hanging on. I'm just barely here. I'm tired of dealing with people that come in the church and they walk out of church saying, well, I guess God don't care for me because guess what? I'm bound by this addiction and I can't overcome it. I want to say, sir, ma'am, it's because you keep going back to that porch by the pool of Bethesda and staying with the same people and they expect to come to church one hour on Sunday, an hour on Wednesday and expect everything to get better. It don't work that way. You got to walk in the house of the Lord and say, guess what, devil? I'm leaving that old porch. I'm leaving my comfort zone. I'm leaving those around me. And I'm walking in a new realm. I'm praying in a new. Mama may not like it, but God is my healer. My friend may not like it, but God is my deliverer. So-and-so may laugh at me, but you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. And this is just, I just feel to preach this. But what is the name of your porch? Blind people get together because they understand each other. They enable each other. They empower each other. I'm not talking physically blind. I'm talking spiritually blind. They build a system of survival built around what would not go away. We'll just get together in a group of people and we'll just build what the, you know what, you know, you ever, you ever notice this? This is free of charge. You know how many times I meet people in outreach that say, I'll be in Dallas, Texas doing outreach. And somebody said, well, I'm moving to Detroit. Well, why are you moving to Detroit? I want to get a fresh start to get away from all these people. How many times do you hear that? Or I'm moving across town. 
unlike you knucklehead, as long as you don't, you've got that spirit that's inside of you, those same people will find you in Detroit uh, because like spirit are drawn together. This is biblical. So if you've got an addiction problem, addicted people will find you. If you've got a depression problem, depression people will find you. If you've got a bitterness problem, bitterness people will find you until you walk in the house of the Lord and say, I don't got to go to Detroit. All I got to do is say, guess what? I don't need to go to Detroit, Chicago, or anywhere else. I just need to lift up my hands and say, Lord, get me off this porch. Get me out of this misery. Let me loose from these struggles. Let me loose from these trials. Let me loose. Somebody make a joyful noise. and Somebody let the enemy know I'm getting ready to come out of this mess. I've been bound long enough. I'm getting ready to come out. I'm getting ready to break some things. If we could heal, it would leave. But since we can't heal it, we make it nice and comfortable. Well, I can't get it fixed by my counselor, my doctor, or my best friend, so we'll just make it comfortable. If you're not careful, you will build a system around something that you have lost faith that it could change. God wants to do something in your life. He didn't call you to be stuck on a porch. He didn't. Defining yourself by dysfunction, you have developed a survival mechanism to fit your dysfunction. I did it. I'm human. I like to drink and get high. Sorry if I offended you, but that's the world I liked. I came into the church and I felt the power of God. But I still wanted to go get drunk and get high because I was used to those kind of people. I didn't mind you church people on Sunday and God forbid a Wednesday night. That's a little much. But I had my other porch friends on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday that I like to run with. Because I wanted to be around like-minded people because I was stuck on a porch. I was satisfied with just surviving. Surviving. Is, is that really what Jesus wanted me to do was just survive? Until somebody kept coming, knocking at my door from the church and said, Charlie, do you want to survive or do you want to be revived? I didn't understand what she meant. She said, you're sitting in an area around people that will let you die. And six minutes after you're gone, they're going to forget about you anyhow. Or are you going to walk into the house of the Lord and connect to a God that is greater than your alcohol, than your addictions? Than... I'm preaching to somebody. It's time to get revived. Stop surviving. Get up off your porch. Tell Aunt and Uncle Bill, I'm leaving you behind. Tell Daryl, I'm not coming back anymore. Tell Johnny, I've come into the presence of God. The Lord is touching me from the top of my head to the... Something's got to burn up inside of you. I don't mind being around people that don't have anything. I, I, I love, I work, a pastor could tell you, I don't care if you don't have anything to your name. I don't mind if you're poor. I don't care if you don't have a car, because I didn't. I didn't have nice clothes. I didn't have nice, I didn't have anything. Who am I to judge? That doesn't matter. I don't mind if you don't have anything. I just don't want to be around people who don't want anything. If you hang around dead people, I hate to bust your bubble, but you're going to die. Is there anybody here that wants something from the Lord on a Wednesday night service? Is there anybody here that's walked into the house of the Lord on a midweek service and said, I'm getting off of my porch tonight and I'm getting ready to walk in a realm that I've never walked in before? There are people who come to church who don't want anything from the Lord. They come every service. They're satisfied with just survival. They want to survive, and they're ready for church to be over so they can go back to their survival mode. But there are others who come because they're desperate for something from the Lord. I may not be there yet, but I want it. 
I may not know how to get it, but I want it. You desire God to direct you to your destiny. The Bible says, I will give you the desires of your heart. But if you don't have no desires, then he has nothing to give you. I've had many times people ask me, how in the world can you be preaching all over the country? Who are you and what is your name? I said, well, if I would have sat on the porch that you're sitting on, I would have just been like I've always been because my mama abandoned me as a child raised in foster care, so I would have been a mess bound by drugs and alcohol. But instead of sitting on the porch, I started watching all these people at the sheep market getting blessed and enjoying life. I said, I need to get to the house of the Lord and get something better than what I had. And the next thing you know, You're still sitting up on a porch 20 years later and I'm enjoying the blessings of God. I'm preaching to somebody, get up off your porch. Make up your mind. I'm going to the sheep market. I'm going to the house of the Lord and I'm going to worship him with everything that... Oh, somebody let the enemy know I'm getting ready to come up. I'm getting ready to come out. I'm getting ready to be... I'm not going to die of this. This is not going to control me anymore. When you cannot, can I have about five minutes, Pastor? I'm watching the clock. You cannot be casual when you are in a state of crisis. When you know the odds are against you and you got to drag this problem in order to get to drag it with you. You have to want it on another level. If you just want it like the person next to you, they'll step in front of you. Exceptional desires gets exceptional results. You ever notice that some of the worst people become successful because the same thing that made them very bad is the same thing that can make them very good? When they want something, they may have went after it the wrong way. They point it the wrong direction. But as soon as they get it right, they can do exceedingly I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but I know that somebody been praying for my brother back there for many, many years, and every time I've seen him in church, he's got guests with him in the house of the Lord, and my brother back there, I'm not trying to embarrass him. There's a lot of people that thought, hey, he'll never come in, but when he got pointed the right direction, he said, not only am I getting off of my porch, but I'm going to the house of the Lord, Brother Clint, and I'm going to let every devil know I'm not going back to the porch that I used to sit on. I I used to sit there all those years but when I got delivered I got delivered and I went to the house of the Lord and said the joy of the Lord is my strength somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise Somebody let the enemy know, guess what? I'm coming off of my porch. I'm getting ready to walk into the enemy's camp. Take back what you stole from me. Give me my anointing. Give me my worship. Give me my joy. Give me my blessings. Somebody lift your hands across this building. Somebody lift your hands. That's it. Call on his name for just a moment. See, I don't understand how people can be casual about this. When I was a young evangelist back in the day, bro, when I was a young feller, you know, I don't know how old you are. How old are you? Okay, I wasn't quite, you know, right around that, so I'm give or take a few years. There's this girl in the church I was preaching at, and she's going around telling everybody that I wanted to go out with her. And she spread this rumor all over the church. Oh, he likes me. I saw him looking at me. I saw him give me the eye. So after about a week of that, I had enough of that nonsense. And I went after her, and I said, let me tell you something, sis. If I wanted you, I would get you. You're saying you're being arrogant. Because when I put my mind to something, I get what I want because I serve a God that is greater than my struggle. So guess what? I've made up my mind when I'm going to live for God and worship him. Ain't nothing going to stop me from praising and worshiping the name of the Lord. Honey, you got to stop sitting back and saying you can't get it. If you want it, go get it. If you want deliverance, go get it. If you want healing, go get it. If you want joy, go get it. If you want freedom, go get it you want anointing go get it you want oh somebody let the enemy know I'm coming out of my porch I'm going out to the market and I'm getting what I want I'm going to worship like I never did I'm going to praise like I never did I'm going to walk in a realm like 
musicians get in place right now in spite of the bad leg in spite of the blind eye in spite of the withered hand you gotta get enough fire inside of you to say guess what on the outside it doesn't look good but on the inside God's getting ready to do a miracle inside of my life. When I got picked up and she took me to the church, I will never forget this. She looked straight at me, the young lady that won me to the Lord, and she said, Charlie, what do you want out of life? Do you want to continue down the path that you are? with a little fragment of God in your life? Or do you want to get off your porch? She said, what was your mama? I said, from what I understand, she was an alcoholic. What was your dad? I don't know much about him, but what I understand was he was a drug addict. She said, well, you got the best of both worlds. She said, you're on drugs and drinking. So guess what? Is this how you want to live your life? She said, you'll die in this mess eventually. I needed somebody to tell me that. I didn't need somebody to patty cake and go, oh, I'm praying for you, Charlie. You just keep doing what you're doing on your porch. I needed, I, I've been tired of watching people down in the field having a good time at the sheep market, getting healing. I'm tired of watching Johnny getting blessings. I was tired of watching Brian over here getting a healing. I'm tired of watching young people see the anointing of God bless their lives while I sit there in misery. Come to church, hear a song, preach a sermon, but go home and sit on my porch. And my friends come up to me and say, oh, you went to church, huh? How was it? It was good, huh? It was good, right? Yeah, I'm right here. Don't worry. I ain't going nowhere, Jeremy. It was good church. Well, that's fine. I don't mind if you go to church. As long as you come hang out with us on the porch as soon as church is over. Hey, let's light that puppy up. Let's go get a cold one. And that's what I would do until I had somebody look at me and say it's time to get off your porch because 38 years he sat waiting for somebody to get him up to get him in the pool because he couldn't think he could do it himself 38 years it should have been done long before those 38 years but he sat there and waited for 38 years wait for somebody to pick him up and put him in the pool of Bethesda why he could have been done one week into that 38 years because he was so busy hanging out on the porch with the friends around him. And then the people around him, after he did get up and he did get in the water and he did rise up and Jesus said, pick up your mat and you are healed, right? After all that happened, the Pharisee said, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you did a healing on this day and began to criticize when you step off the porch, your friends are going to turn their back on you. People will make fun of you. People will criticize you. People will talk bad about you. People told me I joined a cult. People said I was weird. People said I was swinging from chandeliers. People said, oh, you're going to all this church of all these rules and regulations. But I said, uh-uh, honey. When I got off the porch, I made up my mind I ain't never been happier. This ain't a cult. A cult is when you're bound by drugs and alcohol. A cult is when you're controlled by the things of the world. This ain't a cult. I can lift up my hands. I got freedom to worship. I'm not bound by anything but the joy of the Holy Ghost. This is... There's nothing more powerful than a healing, a deliverance, a miracle. There's nothing more powerful than lifting up my hands and saying, look what the Lord has done. I'm done preaching, Pastor. But she looked at me, and she simply said this. She said, Charlie, to get off the beach, she said, the porch will take you to hell. That's what she told me. And they'll forget about you six minutes later. Oh, you're going to get into the presence of God. Yeah, I had friends make fun of me. Yeah, I had friends criticize me. Yeah, I, I lost relationships in the world. Yeah, I had to go through, uh, my foster parents told me I was nuts and told me all I joined a cult and, did, and haven't had anything to do with me. Yeah, I had to go through all that. Yeah, I was cussed out by my father's foster dad the day I got the Holy Ghost. He used God's name in vain and cussed me out. 
because I joined a church that was different than the porch. Because I supposed to, the only religion you can go to is a certain kind of religion. Honey, I didn't get anything from that religion. But when I walked into one of these churches and a young lady said, there's heaven to gain and hell to lose. And I lifted up my hands and I worshiped God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost came down on me and I spoke in tongues and I'd never done that before. Like a mighty rushing wind, joy came across my body. And when I was baptized in the name of Jesus and I come up out of that something got a hold of me better than any drug I've ever smoked better than any pill I've ever popped better than any alcohol I've ever drank better than any I'm preaching to somebody there's nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus the name of Jesus heals the name of Jesus delivers the name of Jesus revives the name of Jesus changes the name of somebody make a joyful noise and I've buried a lot of people in outreach because of drugs. I've lost friends that I've witnessed to him every day. And he would tell me, I'm sorry, I'm done, Pastor. But every day he would tell me, I'll come to church. But my wife doesn't like your church. I said, how you know nothing about it? Well, she looked up on the internet and read an article. I said, John, you got to. He says, I believe what you're doing is real. I see the change in you. But I don't want to disrupt my porch, my family. I don't want my wife to get a... F John goes on a skiing trip about four years ago in Colorado. I think it's Vail or whatever it's called out there. He gets on a mountain, goes skiing down, and he gets killed in a skiing accident. And I said, Lord, why? Why did this stuff happen? And the Lord says, everybody decides whether they're going to stay on the porch. I didn't promise everybody was going to live to be 80. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I'm preaching this. I'm, I don't want one person to walk out of here and overdose on drugs after hearing this sermon. I don't want one person to walk out of here and commit suicide after this sermon. I don't want one person to walk out of here bound by anger after this sermon. I don't want one person to walk out of here bound by their struggles after this sermon. I don't want one person to feel like they're no good after this sermon. I don't want one person to beat themselves up and say they can't live for God after this sermon. I want you to walk inside of this place and let every enemy know today is my day to get off the porch. Today is my day to get a breakthrough. Today is my day for a Holy Ghost filled apostolic. I'm done. Jeremiah, get ready. I'm done. My Uncle Bill, when I went over there, he said, I see you join one of them crazy churches. They all speaking tongues over there, I see. He tried to make fun of me and laughed at me. And I wanted to run back to my porch. But when I said, God changed something on the inside. I said, Bill, I would have probably been dead by now if it wasn't for the grace and the mercy of God. He said to me, he said, Charlie, I've been under pressure to stay in this particular religion for the rest of my years because that's what my mama was and that's what my grandma was. He said, but when I'm talking to you, I feel something so powerful inside of you that I can feel it in... He said, I don't know what you got a hold of, but your God is something powerful because I feel him on you. Honey, I want every devil in hell to know when I get off my porch, I'm not just coming. I'm not just a showman, but I'm an apostolic, Holy Ghost-filled, tongue-talking child of God. I got something so powerful in me. Ain't no devil in hell going to stop me. Preaching it, preaching, preaching. We need revival. We need revival. We need revival. We need I said this and I'm done pastor we preach people are trying to clean everybody up I'm sick of, I don't care about cleaning nobody up oh you, you you're coming no I'm not we're dealing with floods we're dealing with people's suicide. We're dealing with depression. We're dealing with people hurting. We're dealing with people who don't know who their identity is. I just want you to come off the porch 
I don't care if you come up here with a beard hanging to your toes, a pair of Bermuda shorts on a table. I don't care. I just want somebody that wants to get off their porch and say, God, show me who I am. Let me feel your anointing. Let me lift up my hands and touch the throne room of God. Let me walk in... I preach this because people think the church is judgmental and we're not. I'm done, Pastor. I'm sorry I had to say all this. I hope I'm okay. We're not judgmental. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to help you. There may be churches around here to judge you. Listen, I don't care what you did last night. That's between you and God. I don't need to know. Don't want to know, Ryan. I don't need to know, big fella. I just want people to say, even if I struggle, I'm going to go back. This evangelist is not here to embarrass you. Even if you make a mistake, even if you put a needle in your arm and shot yourself up with heroin, I'm still alive and I still got one more chance to get off my porch and go to that old altar. I still got one more chance. Lord, nobody's going to judge me. Nobody's going to look at me. I don't care if you sniffed a line of coke. you got to make up your mind. What's it going to take to get your attention? Do we need another flood? Do we need another hurricane? What do we need? Do we need a world fight? Do we need one more? T- do, we, do we need to have another have a country where we need more riots? We need more buildings burnt down? Honey, none of this is going to go away. It's only going to get worse. You can c- complain about your political stuff, but that, that ain't going to help anything. We're in the last day, sweetheart. Wake up. I don't care who you vote for. It ain't going to fix it. We're in the last days. God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh that want to get off the porch and say, I'm not fighting whether I'm Democrat, Republican, or in between. I'm going to the altar. Whether I'm an addict or I'm depressed, whether I'm angry or from a broken home, whether I've been sexually abused or whether I haven't, I'm going to the altar and I'm coming off of this whole porch. If you need a miracle in your life, I want you to stand to your feet. Any kind of, you're struggling, you've got something going on. Again, I said no judgment zone. I want you to stand to your feet. Any, you need anything from God, I want you to stand to your feet right now. No judgment zone. Pastor, that's why I love this man. Listen, this is probably one of my top three or four favorite churches because I can't ever say number one or number two because if somebody sees this, they, you know how that gets. Somebody's pastor, well, I thought I was your favorite just say it's in the top three you moved up the notch we've been praying for this for a long time for this man I love this man over here he's been through a lot he stuck it out said I'm going to have a revival church in this city no matter how hard it is and God's pouring out a spirit but if you need a miracle I want you right now those that are standing I want you to lift both your hands to heaven right now I'm sorry I didn't mean to go so long but I want you to lift up both your hands to heaven right now Lord I need a miracle I need before I even this man makes an altar call and I promise it won't be much longer but Lord I need a miracle I need a healing Lord Jesus I need somebody to speak to me Lord I'm tired I'm drained I'm worn out I need a miracle I, I don't even know who I am my identity I'm confused I'm struggling this is how it starts it starts with one person saying I'm ready for a breakthrough who's one person that you're ready for a breakthrough hold up your hand right now are you ready sis is somebody over there really ready for a break? I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't want anybody. Be, but you're ready for a breakthrough. And peer pressure is all around you in the world. But if you're ready for a breakthrough, I want you to hold up one hand right now. You're ready. And don't do it because a person around you or behind you. Do you need breakthrough? You all need a breakthrough over there? You got your hands up? You really ready though? You serious? I don't want to embarrass anybody. You ready? Come here. Come here. Come on. Come with her. I'm not a fan of Ooga Booga preachers. I don't like them. I don't care if you have them or don't have them. I don't like them because I don't like to make people feel comfortable. And what that means is I'm not an Ooga Booga preacher, which means I'm not going to tell you what you ate, what you did, because I don't really care, and I don't care about what you did. I don't care about your personal life. That's none of my business. My job is to help you get strength from him to deal with your personal life and get victory. How many times have you been to this church? A bunch? Or... First time, get out of... I would say get out of Dodge, but please don't get out of Dodge yet. Yes, but God, hey, we got a lot of those coming through this building. You walked in right church, and you're from Oklahoma. How, who, how are you connected to this young lady? 
Well, praise God. We're going to pray over you. I want one person to come forward right now. Help me pray. One person, anybody that can help me. A lady come up here. Anybody, just one or two. We're going to pray over you. And I'm not going to embarrass you because you're looking for something. That's why you're here from Oklahoma. You're looking for answers. And you want God to do a miracle in your life. And you're like, Lord, I heard about this crazy preacher. Okay, I'll go to church. He gets loud and excited. And he's got his goofy shirt all wrinkled up. And he looks like a complete hot mess. He's from even further north than me in St. Louis. And there he is getting loud. And I'm like, Lord, can you turn it down a little, preacher? But God said, I, I see you. And it maybe it took all this to get your attention because there's a lot of pain you've been hurt you've been abused you've been neglected but God still loves you I want to pray over you I want you to lift your hands to heaven how you feel comfortable sis and I want to say a prayer over you Lord you see the pain right now in her life right now when I count to three all pain and suffering is going to go right now Holy Ghost getting ready to come out of her right now it's that quick Holy Ghost getting ready to come out of her right now that's it go ahead open up right now receive you a touch of the Holy Ghost right there Come here, Pastor. I'm going to move on quickly. Holy Ghost, all she can receive it, right? Brother Clinton, I don't know nothing about you personally. The only thing I ever said, and don't hold it against me, is I thought that was your son. But you're a soul winner. You got that anointing on you. I can barely see. I don't know what my name is. Glasses. I think I'm pointing to you, ain't I? Show me. You're a soul winner. God's got a calling on your life. This is what your calling is right here. I feel that. I want you to walk in it. If you want, you need a miracle. Somebody else over here, I feel it right now. You need God to answer a prayer. Hold up one hand right now. You're over on this side. Come here, sir, in the yellow shirt. Clint, come up here with him. I think you know him. Clint's going to be my, I don't know anything about Clint. I'm not here to go on and on about him. But me and Clint come from the same world. And I'd rather, the world we come from, bros, we'll just sit on the porch and drink a little, have a good time, get a little high chase women that's where we come from that's where I come from and those spirits will contain us and control us you'll see a 70 year old man saying he's still running around with seven women you're like you're about dead it's that spirit but when you get off of it you've been raised to life God uplifts you to talk to young men like this and young people like this I want you to lift your hand up, young man. And we're going to pray over you. Brother Clint, you got an anointing on you. Don't sell yourself short. And even if we struggle, Brother Clint, don't ever think that your anointing is not there. Because it is. When I lay my hands on him right now, I want you to begin to bind every attack that could come against your life, young man. Every struggle right now in the name of Jesus. Receive. Clint, I want you to come around front. I want you to lay your hands. That's it. I want a Holy Ghost filled man to pray. I got to keep going. You need something from God. Hold up one hand right now. You need God to answer some kind of prayer in your life. Hold up one hand. If you need God to answer some kind of prayer in your life, because of time, I want you to come up here right now. Come up to this sweaty preacher right now. You raised your hand. Come on up here. You can be a member or a guest. If we got guests that need it right now, make your way up here right now. That's it. Come in. That's a guest. Somebody else on my right. Come on up here. One, two three four five six so you may never get this chance again seven i want some holy ghost filled people to come stand behind these people right now real quick come up real quick they're getting ready to sing come on that's it stay with them that's it this is your prayer partner right here you're dealing god's dealing with you you need a breakthrough in your life you need god to do a miracle in your life what do you what do you want from god deliverance do you believe that you can receive it I want you to lift your hands right now in Jesus and I want you to begin to ask God to forgive you right now I want somebody to find a prayer partner up here I want everybody that's in this altar that needs a breakthrough to lift your hands up to heaven right now they're getting ready to sing here in a minute but I need some prayer partners get ready to help me pick one person that's it some of you could come help me pray for some of these wonderful people and when we lay our hands on you god's gonna fill you with the baptism of the holy ghost right now right now in the name of g i want you to begin to repent of your sins right now in the name of jesus and after you do god can fill you with that's it brother charlie your job is to pray him through right now in the name of jesus let the anointing of the holy ghost begin to minister they can begin to sing whenever they're ready go ahead they've had time to prepare i want everybody that's in this altar to lift your hands right now Find a print. If you're praying for one of these people, that's your prayer partner. They can sing whenever they're ready. And when we pray, I believe God's going to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's it. Don't leave that person till you get what you need. 
I want you to lift your hands to heaven right now. I want you to open up your mouth and begin to praise him right now. In the name of Jesus, that's it, go ahead. That's it, talk to him, that's it, go ahead. That's it, open up your mouth, ask God to forgive you right now. Sing it, musicians. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus, go ahead. You can receive the Holy Ghost right now, brother. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, that's it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, in your name right now. In your name, in your name, in your name. My brother's on him. He is doing things he's never done in his life. God has given him health. God's going to give him strength in his body so he can do your work right now. In the name of Jesus, go ahead. Don't stop. Did she get the Holy Ghost? Don't stop. That's it. Find somebody. That's it. Stay with them. That's it. That's it. I'm coming back to your prison. I'm coming back to your prison. We're not done yet. We need at least three to get the Holy Ghost tonight. The Lord showed me we need at least three. And somebody. Don't stop. Don't stop. Somebody else is going to get it today.